Hello everyone. Hi, this is Samadhi here with Oscar and this is part two, two, two of uh, Ecstatic. Oh, oh, oh. oh. hey, um, did you ever wonder what the history of Ecstatic Dance is? Well, obviously so did uh, Yasmin um, Hinkesh. Hinkesh. Yasmin Hinkesh has written this book. This is a history of uh, the ancient art of contacting spirits through ecstatic dance. So this is just a part, a sliver of ecstatic dance history. I'm so grateful that Oscar is bringing this book to, uh, to light and to uh, our show today because I don't have to write the history of ecstatic dance. <laughs> we already have it done. So yeah. So that was sure. one of your desires? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I'm interested in the history of ecstatic dance and it's a vast history. I mean, it goes all the way back to um, uh, an Indian <clears throat> Vedic dance form that I've uh, looked into called Bharatanantyam, which was like 5,000 years ago, um, mm -hmm. you know, from 200 B, uh, eight, uh, BC to maybe 5,000 years ago and the first kinds of devotional dance and uh, the artistic uh -oh. aesthetic of Baba and Rasa that um, <laughs> I've sort of overlaid uh, on our aesthetic dance evolution musical structuring um, but yeah so I mean there's a, such a rich history of um, ecstatic uh, practices in uh, she many does a, different cultures. An amazing work that she does to go and cover every aspect of the, the background of dance and even sounds and ritual and things that came together to, that we've been doing since our early days as humans. It's like, so she did, she was thinking <laughs> about you. Right, yeah, and you know, um, I grew up as a professional dancer in this sort of jazz tap ballet uh, contemporary modern um, dance world uh, rhythm tap and and for some reason I missed like the spiritual dance concept for you know at least 30 years or 30 something years mm -hmm. until I found ecstatic dance with you and and Austin body choir and also Dunya's um, Dunya McPherson's dance meditation and that was based on a Sufi dance practice and so that's really what I've been searching for um, in dance to find like my home in dance uh, as a spiritual practice. And that's what I find dance is a spiritual practice. Yes. And um, that's why I love uh, talking with Oscar, discovering more and more about the transformational qualities of at least where we come from, our history in ecstatic dance. And uh, so that's what we want to share a little bit with you today about. So yeah, tell us a little bit about this book. She also talks very much about the scientific studies done on our brain waves and different, you know, vibrations and things that happen uh, during like theta, beta, delta, the, the, the mm -hmm. brain's five frequencies. And so when we're, we're working with music and um, different tones and different things, but there was one verse I just want to share real quick. Yeah, um, She says, um, what is reality anyway? Unfiltered input or what our culture determines we should see, hear, and react to. Mm -hmm. Humans are susceptible creatures with easily trained, malleable brains. <laughs> It is possible we might be seeing, hearing, and feeling only the sensations we have been taught to expect. Mm -hmm. And so when I, this is, this is what I've been working with since I started doing uh, ecstatic dance is I'm an advocate of free will. Yeah. So the, my intention when I put together music or a whole set is to offer this each each individual dancer a connection to their own free will because just like i said we all have a history 
of our upbringing and we were taught patterns and we were taught expectations and we were taught programmings. So we are mostly operating out of a programming. And how do we um, um, break that? Um, and I, I, I saw a video, I, I could tell you the name of the, the author, but um, he was talking about we're 95% we're programming and we're only operating on 5% intuition or our own stuff. And I was like, wow, what if we could like switch it? But a good friend of mine said, but if you could just one notch, <laughs> go from five to, or like 95 to 90 or 97. I mean, it would be amazing just to get, just to break the pattern, the, the programming, just one degree. Right, yeah, and and we can, we can do it. And I, I do believe that ecstatic dance is one of the ways that we can do exactly. that. And I, I've definitely been an experiencer of this, and I think a lot of it has to do with getting into that, well, she says, she says right here, trends. You know, getting into this, for me, um, what comes up is that present, extreme present moment space where there's no thoughts going on um, mm -hmm. from, you know, we're just sometimes feeling led or mm -hmm. guided or uh, I, I sometimes catch myself being danced. Um, and, and every time that happens, uh, I'm in ecstasy really about it. But I know that that's been really good for me. It's been healthy for me and it's healthy for my body. And um, just the amount of transformation and healing that, that has occurred within my being of like, what is my reality? Um, my reality has completely changed over over all of these years of like really cracking the matrix of, you know, in ecstatic dance, cracking my matrix of like my programming and just being able to have so many more possibilities and perspectives. Um, you know, part of it for me too is being able to change my perspective on something that I thought was real, you know, <laughs> and then like, wait, no, that's not yes. real at all. Or that was real then, and now, now my reality has changed. <laughs> and that's the thing about reality is mm -hmm. um, we base it on what we've been taught or, or given, and we live in that bubble, and um, it can affect our self worth. Exactly. Because right. without mm -hmm. that bubble, being up, to go outside of that bubble. Um, our self-worth um, is based on and then so we're we're always looking for that approval outside mm -hmm. of ourselves and we're looking for right. uh, validation mm -hmm. and and if we don't get it especially on a daily basis um, we start to lose our self-worth um, so we, we might find it somewhere else um, to you know, alcohol, drugs, or anything like that. That that because it the yeah. realities um, are only based on somebody else's expectations. So yeah, I so totally when, relate to that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because that's kind of where I think a lot of people come into ecstatic dance at those moments. Um, you know, where uh, their capacity, like you were saying, you know, their capacity has been lessened. You know, it's smaller and smaller and smaller. And, and I know I was really seeking for something that was more nourishing, more fulfilling, um, healthier, and mm -hmm. more spiritual. Um, you know, so I think once once people, and, and my, my, my self-worth was very low and my self-esteem, even though I was a professional dancer, um, you know, there was a lot of criticism and comparisons and competition in that whole realm. And um, I never felt good enough, uh, you know, until, I found this type of dance that uh, allowed me to, you know, look at my free will, right? Mm -hmm. Like, who am I? I think that's maybe one of the biggest questions that this dance really addresses is, who am I? And then I get an amazing chance to explore who I am 
with this amazing music and the space and, and, all, and all of this. Um, so yeah, still, still searching, but I have, <laughs> I have a lot more self-worth. Mm -hmm. I've gained so much uh, confidence, self-confidence and courage. Um, I'm, you know, a completely, I, I keep becoming a completely new person. Um, the more that I explore myself and others in static dance. So, um, yeah, I love that uh, concept of free will that you're talking about, you know, uh, that your dance is offering your community, your people, your, your like one thing, right? One thing. Like, if, is this your one thing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think I had an experience when I first started facilitating. I was, um, it was early on and I remember that I was floating over the room. For some reason I was floating and I could see mm -hmm. the dance floor and each dancer. And a couple of, one person caught my attention and they were uh, like their energy was spiraling. Um, and I, the better, for the better way to describe it, it was like a little universe or a little macrocosm. So I called it a micro, a microcosm. And then another one did it, and they they like they like connected to their source or something in their dance, and they were just they sh they were shining and they were bright and they were like vibrant. Mm. And then all of a sudden, it was happening to another person. Like each one was reaching that level. And when it when enough people in the room did it it exploded into the whole room into a macrocosm, mm. which somebody later told me, well, that's community, you know, but, but then, and, and so I said, and it starts with the individual. Each individual has to be in their microcosm while we're in the macrocosm, mm. because that's what created the macrocosm. If, so my offering to the dance is to serve the individual to reach their microcosmness, mm. and hopefully, right? You're always hoping that then the room, the group becomes a macrocosm, which it had always has become. Yeah. Um, that we elevate each other and ourselves to the level of the. Our, our self worth and our self love and our self beingness is in such a high level that uh, we don't depend on anybody and we stop operating from others' expectations. Mm -hmm. I got the saying from doing my calendar, my, my time travel, I call it, uh, <laughs> that the goal is to live by your own expectations. Yeah. And in order to do that, you have to tap into who, your true essence and embrace it. No, ma no matter if it doesn't fit their expectations mm -hmm. or, go, you know, it does like, we have to have, be bold and, and, and create, courageous to say, well, if I'm not going to be accepted or if I'm not going to, or I'm going to be disowned mm -hmm. or, but it's like, but well, well, what is the alternative to live by their expectations all my life? And it doesn't work for me, right. you know, for each one of us. So we each have to find that, um, what it is, our own, you know, expectations, our own uh, desires, uh, what makes our lives wonderful, what makes our life vibrant. And, and stick to that and not say, well, until I'm validated by certain, my, either my family or a group or a guru or a teacher or anybody, you live by your own expectations and it, you stop feeling, like you said, not, you know, not having the approval of others because you weren't being that as good of a dancer as the others or like this. Right, right, yeah. And it's like, without all that, you're you're happy, you know. Yeah, I'm happy where I, I got to. Empowered, I'm self empowered. You know? We want to we want to create a room full of self empowered yeah. beings. You know, yeah. a whole community, a whole world full of self empowered beings. That one.
That's and I know that is that is one of the legacies of ecstatic dance in itself, and um, at least the the ecstatic dance that that um, I am promoting and and that I experience that I experience with your dance and with mm. uh, a lot of dances and uh, you know magical uh, music uh, designers, you know. Yeah, the best compliment is to be told that I came to the dance and then I realized something amazing and left, like left the dance and like, perfect. <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah. That's my yeah. joy is that people find what they need and they, they, they don't need the dance anymore. Hopefully they're dancing consistently but somewhere mm -hmm. else. And, but that what i'm offering is not to to keep them there to make them dependent mm -hmm. of it because again they would be living by my expectations and and it's not it's, it's about free will uh so i have to accept that part of the formula to empower people is that they will leave that right. they will go <laughs> and they will <laughs> <laughs> and they'll fly away <laughs> Because yeah. when you gave them wings, or right. you taught yeah. them that they yeah. have wings. Yeah. Each like, one well, of us has wings. Yeah. yeah. And if they fly, they fly. They, they pop in once in a while. Great. Let's see that. Yeah. And, and I, I've seen people come in, in waves, you know, like there's a certain time in people's lives that they will really benefit from being a part of the dance. And then they'll, then there's a time where they're, yeah, they're flying off and it's time for them to go do something else. Mm -hmm. So, um, it turns into like <laughs> oasis out there in the desert and I gotta go. <laughs> then like, know, we, need, we gotta get back to dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, it definitely serves a, a beautiful purpose for those of us that um, are in that phase where um, we need, you know, we need a space where we can explore ourselves and that beautiful community support where um, we are feeling invited and accepted and loved and appreciated just for where we're at, for who we are in that moment, that day, um, and being in that space where we can blossom <laughs> and, you know, move through it, move through it. So, yeah, I mean, freedom, I think that, you know, freedom is uh, something that, that a lot of dancers that come to our dance get to experience. Um, you know, even like coming in as a dancer, I, I thought I was feeling free in my movements and all of this, but you know, it, there's so many deep levels in what we, what we now call ecstatic dance. Um, I mean, this, this brings up <laughs> another deep levels, um, you know, when, when you started, mm -hmm. it wasn't called ecstatic. I mean, we weren't using the name ecstatic dance for the name of the dance. We knew that we were participating in ecstatic dance because um, Gabrielle Roth had brought this terminology um, mm -hmm. back up, you know, uh, resurfaced the terminology in the 90s when she released her ecstatic waves um dvds i think it was a dvd or could have been a, a vhs tape right <laughs> probably that yeah, yeah. probably a tape so um so so yeah um because you asked me about the definition of ecstatic and now right. that we've been talking i i get that the um the word dance is can be very intimidating yeah so if you say I'm holding a dance and the first thing people that don't know this mm -hmm. type of dance, um, they relate to themselves as a, as a dancer and they say, well, I'm not a dancer. I never learned how to dance. Let me kiss <laughs> the kitty wants to come in. Hey, carry the door um, yeah. Um, yeah, the word, so the word dance is intimidating, and I, I was always shy of saying, using the word dance, and like movement, I'm like, oh, right. this is a free right. form of movement. And um, the, um, ex I think adding the word ecstatic gives it a little more, um, like it's not a training, it's like you don't have to learn how to dance or a specific way, because there is, there is no specific way, it's just, 
allowing it to come out of you naturally and just see what happens. So ecstatic mean, for me means um, getting out of the way. <laughs> so yeah. this energy that's inside of us, I know there's people that come in and they're, I've come in after a week of work or people come in, they're exhausted mm -hmm. and they're like, I have no energy. I'm just going to lay over here and just sit down or, and, you know, feel the music. And we, we have no idea that our bodies and our beingness have so much power and energy restored, I mean, restored, um, stored inside of us that the right song comes on and this right. person is up and then another song comes on and they're flying through the room. And you're like, you had no energy before. Right. You know, it's, like, yeah. it's like when you see kids burst out of school when the bell rings. I mean, where is that? And it, <laughs> they're like 10 tired minutes ago, class, they were just so like, like <laughs> you know, yeah. drilling. And, and so right. there's energy always stored inside of us. Um, it, it's our mental, like she says, uh, we've been, conditioned and programmed so mm -hmm. if a word like dance can intimidate you and then make you feel like i'm not gonna go because i don't know how to dance so the ecstatic is to say but you can you can move you know you can just um, move your shoulders or whatever so yeah i mean i think the, the term ecstatic dance has had uh it's had its controversy, you know, over all of these years. For one, like you said, the name dance, but, um, and then ecstatic, um, really it's an ancient terminology, you know, that um, I love it because uh, it does have a spiritual history, like with the ecstatic nuns and the ecstatic priests and ecstatic meant um, for those who could go beyond what was normal, mm -hmm. go beyond, the mundane reality of every day to something well the how i interpret it interpret it is is a, a, a way of connecting with source or connecting with something beyond what i'm typically used to and so that could mean like very internal you know something deep inside me or um you know the typical way people think of ecstatic i think is like woo, you know like super happy or right. extroverted or um, external, you know, but for me, I, I mean, I see ecstatic is deeply internal and also all the way to deeply, you know, extremely external, um, energy. <laughs> but I think, you know, the key is energy, um, and that connection, that connected energy of, of the beyond. Well, it's, it goes to as if we could control the energy that's, in, in us, you know, we can even define it or can, um, measure it um, with our logical mind. It's when we get out of that logical mind and we just trust in this, you know, the ecstasy is to let, let ourselves fall into it and uh, there's, that that exists. And when we see ourselves flying, or feel ourselves flying through a room, uh, and we don't recognize ourselves. Right. <laughs> so yeah. you know there's something be beyond what we are conditioned yeah. to understand. Because for me, um, one thing I've learned recently is, too, is the word truth. Mm -hmm. And it's used very like my truth and I'm gonna give you my truth and we hold on to it so rigidly as if this is the only truth and mm -hmm. but everybody's got you know and we're all like pushing our truth on everybody else. Yeah. And then I realized no truth is personal. So that I have a truth of what ecstatic dance and, and mm -hmm. when I create music and put together. But the minute I share it, the minute I speak of it or write it, right. it's just yeah. data. It's just yeah. words, like this book. Yeah. Really, this book is not a truth. It's just, it's just words. And that's any one of us speaks or shares our truth, it, it loses the sense of truth. It no longer becomes a truth. 
But if I can uh, understand that I'm going to share it and then you may take it and be like, hey, okay, thank you. And, and that it's, I don't have to get a, um, hurt or upset about it. That I, I, the minute I release it, I let it go. I let it become what it wants to be. If you throw it, <laughs> fine, well, but that's I mean, okay. And so, but hopefully parts of it might help you even strengthen your own truth, but it's personal. And so dance gives us this sense, this connection to this personal truth that we are. And when we, we get to move it and then feel the energy and, and rise and, and expand and then our creativity is just exploding out of us, you know, yeah. um, in a very organic, energetic way that we, 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 couldn't, we couldn't create that in a way we tried. Yeah. And it I, happens spontaneously. It's moved because the music right. and it's moving parts of you and then that <laughs> created this movement and all of a sudden you're doing some crazy. And if we were to look at ourselves from the outside, we'd like, look at those crazy freaks right. and uh they're on <laughs> Which, some drugs yeah. or something and there's no drugs i totally wanted to go to go there like what would it look like from an outsider and then an insider but but before i do that i just want to say um you know possibly what ecstatic dance means is is like it's an individual experience for each person totally right so personal yeah an individual and you won't find that in the dictionary you yeah. know? but for, from my experience yeah um it's not ever the same for two people i mean we can kind of say we had experiences that we've never had before or um at like a mystical type of this sense or a spiritual sensation or something but it's you know, and someone else could say, me too, but it's not the same, you know? So I think it right. is very individualized experience for, ah, oh, look at the kitty, the for, for each person. And I think that's, that's part of the deep beauty of it. But um, let's go to like, a, what would, a, if you're brand new to ecstatic dance, you've never mm -hmm. been to one, what might it look like if you stepped into this scene? For your, I mean, I can, I know how, how, how it was for me, but let's just, <laughs> let's just imagine, you know, what, what would it look like to a brand new person and then to an experienced person? Well, I think first of all, it's intimidating mm. and, uh, and to make sense of it, it's, the, you know, we automatically just call it a bunch of freaks and you know, a bunch of you know stoned out hippies <laughs> on something but that, it's substance free, but it's so. substance free how can i get the same i mean i don't know I, I don't do drugs or anything but um i've experienced in high school when i you know my friends were all like getting high and they were like in, in another dimension and how do i exp in, how do I get the same thing without a substance? Mm -hmm. And dance has been that. Just a little bigger. There you go. She's not saying that. Um, yeah, that's the out. To, even if we saw ourselves, because we, when you're in it and you can't see it, but if you were get to get to see it, you might be like, "Oh my God, I was doing that." <laughs> well, this is one reason why we don't allow photography, right? Yeah. So. In general, um, the photography is is um, asked to to stay out of the dance because it allows people to really go deeply into their experience world without having to look, you know even try to look good or, or or something because ecstatic dance probably doesn't look that good. No. I mean, from a <laughs> dance performance, yeah. you know, comparison, of course, um, it's not about what it looks like. And, um, you know, to any, anyone that I've seen who has come for the first time, they, they've had a kind of an intense reaction, like, what is going on here? And, and that was my reaction, too, and especially coming in 
from a, per, a professional dance class background, I was like, oh my God, the teacher is gonna be so so upset. Like these people are gonna get in trouble. I'm just gonna sit here on the side and be a good student and wait for the teacher and like the teacher never came. So. Right. <laughs> so it was people who were just going crazy. So yeah, I mean, so many of like my friends have come in for the first time to dance and and seeing people rolling around on each other, you know, doing something that now they understand is called contact improvisation. Um, but, but you know, they themselves were adamant, like, I, you will never see me doing that. <laughs> I will never do that. And then, you know, a couple of years later, they're, they're the ones, you know, rolling around and doing contact improvisation and really enjoying it. Um, so I think that there's a huge wide gap um, and a different experience from if you're a new person uh, or someone who hasn't been to an ecstatic dance um, from someone who has been initiated. <laughs> um, they use the term um, dance like nobody's watching. Right. Because right. a lot of people that when they finally find the ecstatic dance, it's like a homecoming because they've been doing this in their room they've been doing this mm -hmm. where nobody is watching right and when nobody's watching you let go you completely lose yourself you know you, you, you crank up the, the stereo in your own room and just there's no there's no steps there's no you're not doing mm -hmm. a pattern or you know a dance that you learn because there's it's it's organic and it's spontaneous and it's and it's never going to be the same yeah you could play that same yeah. song the next day or the next week and you'll your dance will never be the same like you you, you don't step into the same river because right. the river's flowing and then you just step into it well the river you stepped into it five seconds ago is not always there <laughs> yeah. so to do to move like that to come to the ecstatic dances you're coming to the same river but it's not the same river does yeah, that make sense? It's like, always changing. It's always changing. And to say it's okay, um, um, I say dance like everybody's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> or somebody maybe That's dance like good. nobody's laughing. You're like, yeah, you know, just it, you're in your room, but now you're in a group. And so then I, was, I had to tell somebody, but if you, you're feeling embarrassed, look at everybody else and you right. see, like, oh my God, they, they're all like, freaks and weird and so you, you you can totally fit in if you just yeah. stop trying to feel embarrassed or feel you know uh that because we're not watching you we're we're just lost in in their own, in their dance, own ecstatic right? dance so yeah. um to, in fact i mean i i typically promote trying on movements that might look really weird, but um, that are different than what we would normally make just because it's really good for our nervous system to do movements that we haven't done before because it connects in the you know, neurosynapses and can create a lot of uh, you know, better balance and coordination with our movement anyway. So I, that's one of the things I really make an effort to do and it's become a natural thing that is probably, you know, more like a pattern now, but I'm just constantly break, trying to break out of a pattern that I might have. You know, if I typically do this, I'll make, I might try and do the opposite thing just to mm -hmm. break things up. And it's a good way to just also get out of that self-conscious, um, uh, you know, self-consciousness, if, if people, I mean, I came in very self-conscious because I, you know, I came in have, needing to do the right step and there was no right steps in this dance. And so, um, yeah, it's kind of fun to create new exercises for myself that might look really strange, but um, they're actually quite fun and, and <laughs> When I start doing them, someone might start copying my movements and then, you know, we're having a dance that's unique, that's definitely never been done before. We got yeah, there. And, and we see people come in and they've never been given the opportunity to connect with the parts of their body. 
So they usually have the same movement, you know, mostly arms and just stand there and move their arms. And so, I mean, and we're not a class, so we're not teaching you how to connect. I mean, hopefully for me, the selection of songs I actually do. Right. I know there was one song I always say is like, mm -hmm. It's 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 like an invisible hand is reaching out, grabbing your 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 shoulder and going. Yeah, right. Yeah. And you're doing it, and then the other one is making your hips and your. So it's up to us as facilitators to introduce um, the music that will encourage body parts to wake up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that, and and I did want to talk about the music a little bit. Um, okay too because we come out of the era of sort of Gabrielle Ross was uh, bringing her five rhythms which I think is brilliant um, I know this uh, she tuned into this natural correlation between music and body movements mm -hmm. um, that was in alignment with nature you know um, this made sense for music and the body movements and so her five rhythms is definitely a transformational, um, I call it an ascending spiral, just because mm -hmm. things in nature um, have an ascending transformational quality about it, you know, an evolutionary quality. And uh, so um, you want to talk a, a little bit about the, the, how the five rhythms came into dance and how you um, use it or I um, or I mean when I started it. Sweat Your Prayers yes it was mm -hmm. um, powerful I mean, we were tr we were learn what each one was and, and uh, move through them and I found that like this is what I do during my day you know when I wake up mm -hmm. we move into the flow and then you move easy into your right, just getting out it. yeah and then wake up and then now you gotta start a little, you know, like I look at my clock, I gotta get going, I gotta get to work and then get to work and then do my, you know, get into the whatever. And then there's this chaos peak that you're doing. <laughs> right. um, of course, uh, when- The problems that you're solving. Whatever you know, like time you this. get off work, it, when you see that, that time, it's like, your Woo! energy shifts and you go yeah, get dinner and take it home play, and fun. then come home and then you go you're always working down to the right. to the stillness of uh, back to sleep so it's a natural and everything does it you know you see flowers the way they come up right. and they um uh, we were watching the, the lotus somebody had some lotus flowers and that night and we were watching them literally close back like going back into their stillness and they just kind of went back to the yeah, yeah and then in the morning they wake up so right. it's it's in our lives that we see it and the patterns and and so she captured that brilliantly right um and then to create a a movement a, a set as a whole to create that it's a storytelling i was telling you about right that. yeah so the music is is a is our form of storytelling uh and taking everybody through this this story so every every story is going to be different so today's story is i mean and i'm going to pick certain songs and we're going to dance to this story but it, it should be a story that um, my body can follow and then it makes sense you know mm -hmm. and then when it comes back down um it, it it literally understands what where it's now i'm here you know like i'm not waking up anymore or <laughs> right yeah we're at, we're at a certain time of of the story or time of day yeah. you know with this analogy even love making has a story and then <laughs> right you have, yeah. your, you have your ecstasy ecstaticness and then you're laying there and you're like, no, no, not time for four plays. Right. No, we're not going to yeah, start we're, we're, gonna, we're at the end of it. We're just going to like. <laughs> yeah. Right. So capturing, understanding the power, but then the subtlety of the, the, the movement of the story and, and um, you're, you're leading them right through it. 
and mm -hmm. you want to have you know the beginning, the middle, and you want to have that. We we understand that concept. Right. Yeah. The distinctive parts mm -hmm. to the you know the play, right? Yeah. The distinctive parts that call the body to do different type of movements. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean it's it's one of my favorite things is going through you know one of your dances or one of our dances or creating a dance is to you know like you said let each new let each new song open up a new pocket. Like I still like think of that and and that means like I, I want my body to now do a new movement or be inspired to do a new you know, something new, something that I wasn't already doing in the last song, you know, we went to inspire the body to, to, <laughs> to now do something else, you know, yeah. and, and to build on that as we go through the, you know, the hours and the moments of, of the appropriate times of day and, you know, what makes sense to, to that journey. Yeah, I mean, we do it in, in cooking too, or you go to a restaurant, mm -hmm. And you have a five course meal and there's this build up to the course and then you come down and maybe you might have dessert and then you know mm. you just kind of like have a little something to unwind but it's always yeah. it's a story it's you're still telling a story mm -hmm. um and we do that in in our lives too uh we like to progress through something and get it keep it interesting <laughs> right because if it yeah. was the same you know movement the same music for two hours oh my god <laughs> you know? yeah i can't even dance to something more than five you know, if a song has a pattern and it just repeats i'm, I'm i want to get out of there like two minutes <laughs> like, <you> know, <laughs> please do something different yeah at least, uh, max like 10 minutes you know oh like, my god like, 10 you know how long 10 minutes is <laughs> i know it can be really long but wow. like for example if you were if you wanted to you know give your dancers a time where they could struggle and, and fight you know, yeah if it's, if it's interesting it's enough like, by itself yeah. and it keeps going great yeah give them time just, to like get in there and work it out yeah. and, like, you might have, but that's not nice. like yeah, and that's a long time, 10 minutes, maybe so, seven. Minutes. Seven is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Time is relative. <laughs> yeah, but also I think, um, you know, themes are really interesting. And mm. themes can be very effective when thinking of the music as a story. You know, and then that, that can help choose choose certain songs that might relate to your story or, or your theme. and. You know, it's beautiful sometimes when that is just perfect, you know. Just enough lyric to remind you what the theme is and that you've gone through this and have experienced this story. Right, and the theme is, um, has a texture. So, mm -hmm. so every story has a texture. Mm -hmm. And um, once you connect to the texture of what you're trying to offer, the story you're trying to offer, um, that's how the songs will show up based on that texture. I mean, there's texture that's really smooth, and there's texture that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, and there's texture. <laughs> so yeah, every, yeah. I mean, if I touch your hair, I'm feeling a certain texture, but if you touch my hair, yeah. um, and then, you know, this shirt, everything, <laughs> The, look at this. Yeah, look at that. that's, that's a smooth. But yeah. the pages have a different texture. Um, so everything has a texture, mm -hmm. and our bodies understand <laughs> that. Our our bodies move to texture. So music. Yeah, and the, the music is a music. texture, and um, the your skill mm -hmm. allows you to connect to the texture, mm -hmm. and then find music that matches you know I, said, I know one time somebody <laughs> offered a theme that it was going to be liquid and, and you know it's all about kind of water but more about fluidity and like so I'm thinking um quenching and and then the music started and it was dry <laughs> it was like, <laughs> Like they need Desert. some water. <laughs> Let's bring them some water. Yeah. 
maybe the <laughs> the more I got into the desert, the more I went to the water. <laughs> That's right. Then you're having a mirage. So, but but it, it, it went against what was being offered. Mm -hmm. You know, you offer something that you you're giving it to me here, and then I want to take it into here. Mm -hmm. The Body. music takes it here. It takes the idea, the concept. So there's a difference between concept and content. Right. Because content is the texture. Here's the content, the theme. But then I, I dance to content, not to context. What do you think about that? Mm, context is uh, maybe the name of the theme. And like the mental, like meaning of the theme. So can you dance to that? <laughs> you well, can. I mean, you actually it. can dance to that. It's a different yeah, dance. Can. I mean, there's those of us that can dance to just yes. about anything. Yes. But <laughs> at some point, but um, yeah, I mean, for for us, the, we want to dance most of the people most of the time. At, you know, any given dance. Um, of course, you know, if we can touch and move most of the people most of the time. It's got to be an embodied experience. So I, th I think the you know the context of uh, the meaning, what you what the facilitator is, is bringing and offering as far as a story mm -hmm. that you know something that we can relate to of being a human. Maybe it's related to the time of year or or um, just something that's going on astrologically or with the moon cycle or. Um, in our society, something like that, or something just even more personal um, <clears throat> that everyone can relate to, you know. So then um, I just make it a, I do my best to bring any of those qualities into the songs that I would choose. So every song I would be choosing, I would be considering, you know, does this song go with the theme? And, and does it complement the theme? Does it help it, the theme be embodied? So. Right, because one good example is, for example, um, it's Christmas. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to, my program <laughs> is on Christmas Day or Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I play all these Christmas songs. <laughs> 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 that would be context. Yeah. Because right. we're going to dance, but we're going to dance to this Christmas song. We're going to dance to this Christmas song. Yeah, we've already heard that. And we if know that. We mall, know, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm literally going to dance to White Christmas. You know, like, I'm not giving the dancers much room to <laughs> stretch there. It's like, right. that's, that's an audience. I'm serving an audience. I'm not serving participants. By the way, when you're doing context, you're serving an audience because they recognize and they, 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 they're they here. They're going to stay here the whole time. They're moving, but they're here. Um, content would be, it's Christmas Day or Christmas. Mm -hmm. And I find music that I can relate to and has might not have anything to do with a Christmas song, but the emotion and right. that I'm just you know they're moving through this thing now same thing with Halloween right or yeah. uh, like you said um a full moon or anything but I take the texture and um, and find music that that doesn't it's not working on the context level mm -hmm. does that make sense <laughs> yeah um well, one of the ways that I think about the content um, or being, you know, uh, able to embody it on different levels is like the physical level. Um, mm -hmm. What can the body do to this song physically? Um, or what does this song call the body to do physically? Um, what is it doing mentally? Mm -hmm. uh, what is it doing energetically? And uh, mm -hmm. also what are, what are the emotions, you know, that the song would bring out? And then, you know, what is the spiritual connection? So those are the five bodies of the Tao that um, I think relate to the dance really well and um, really do help kind of structure, uh, help me structure at least uh, my choices that I'm making for music and content and, and context. So as a facilitator, um, part of it is, um, to 
hear with my eyes. These mm, become my ears. Right. And then listen, I mean, see with my ears. So these become my eyes. And the way that works is <laughs> um, when I hear a song in the radio or anywhere, you know, mm -hmm. or somebody's playing it, mm -hmm. I'm I'm hearing it with my eyes. I'm, I'm, I'm imagining somebody moving to that. I'm hearing the music and the texture of that song. And, you know, is it ascending or descending? Is it something like, and, uh, but I'm, I'm seeing certain dancers that I've, you know, been with forever and the way they move to certain things. And, right. and yeah, I'm literally exactly. captured, they're, they're, I'm seeing the song through them. Mm -hmm. But then, um, am I watching some dancers, and I could just turn off the volume? Yeah. And then I'm I'm seeing, I'm I'm, I'm hearing with my eyes. I'm trying to imagine what songs playing to that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That they're moving to that, and then I, I I I hear it like, oh my god, look at that! And of course, there's five dancers, and each one's doing something slightly different. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, but. As a facilitator, to train myself to hear with my eyes and listen and hear, oh, see with my ears. Yeah. Hear with my eyes, see with my That's ears. That's beautiful. Then you really start to understand music as a dancer. Yeah, as a dancer, right. Yeah. Because and listening with their bodies. The facilitator, sh for me, should be, should be a dancer. Oh, yeah. You know, if, if a if a person is doing the music doesn't really dance or that that would be strange for me <laughs> I, yeah. I was like i can guess what the music's going to be like but a dancer puts music together because they understand um the mechanics and the and the you know their storyteller you're a storyteller to the body without words I can't tell them what right. to do. I'm, a facilit <laughs> I'm facilitating a dance without saying, okay, now move this up. I mean, there's places you can, they, 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 those people need to go to to get that kind of um, yeah. help. They don't, they, people that don't know how to move body parts, um, Nia, it's a great place, you know, they're, they're guided. So uh, I have, people come and they go, I don't know how to dance by myself. Or, right, yeah. And oh, there's great places to do that, <laughs> to learn, yeah, and, and then I, come back. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, lots of conscious dance modalities um, out there now, and they give a, a great context, you yeah. know, of like how to maybe think about this and use your body. And uh, it's a really, really beautiful uh, classes out there. I highly recommend everyone try out the Five Rhythms class, any guided conscious dance class, or a lot yeah, of conscious. Yeah, those. yeah, beautiful. So then this brings up, goes back to the definition mm -hmm. of ecstatic dance, our format of Sixteen Sense. Mm -hmm. um, it can be challenging because we're not going to, Guy, tell you how to move. We're not going to instruct you how to move. We we do hope though that the music <laughs> will inspire yeah. you to right. do different things with your body along mm -hmm. the way, along the journey. So much so that uh, our physical body has had a chance to really open up um, yeah. the muscles, the bones, the the tight spots to help our energy system be open and flowing, especially by the end to get us, I think it helps with that bliss, you know? So I love it when the music of an ecstatic dance journey has a lot of variety, a lot of different rhythms and mm. melodies. and Melod Yeah, melodic type of music. and emotions. <laughs> and yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So that really helps my whole body open up to that spiritual transcendent, you know, experience that I like to have. Um, and that sense of deliverance, like I come into my experience of me and I was facilitated through all the way through and, and mm. delivered, you know, birthed brand new, I guess. Yeah, safely <laughs> landed. Yeah. Uh, not dropped. Safely landed. <laughs> <laughs> I think you were telling the analogy of a roller coaster, um, maybe last week or something. 
I, I really enjoyed that. You were like, we, we have this roller coaster, right? We're, and we want to, you know, gently take people up. We don't want to just like <laughs> throw them around. Throw them around. But it is a roller coaster. Every time I create a new program, it's a new roller coaster. And it's got, this one's got different little twists. And then it climbs, and some of them might have a really high drop. But <laughs> physics says that, you know, I'm going to introduce a curve on the a real roller coaster. Mm -hmm. I need to understand the G forces and the physics that the, that the car is going to stay on the tracks. <laughs> you know, right, I, don't want, yeah. I don't want this thing flying off and then, you know, hurting anybody. Mm -hmm. um, so dance is the same way. I mean, you can create some changes and you know it goes from one song to the other and there's could be a dramatic like turn that it might be too <laughs> much for this person to adjust that quick you might lose all the people yeah they I said, they just walk, the time to get like, some water or whatever. Yeah. but i've danced to where um somebody says it's it's more like a step and 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 it's saying um okay dance to this song okay and then that one ends, it's like, okay, you know, dance to this song. And so it's like, it's very, does it's not really connected. So the roller coaster idea is that this right. world, this, these songs are so, they blend, I mean, it's so smooth mm -hmm. that that's, if, if you're on a roller coaster, you, you pray that everything's just, yeah. that we're going to fly through this thing and, and it's staying effortlessly together and moving from one you know energy to the next in a, and so I as a facilitator have to be an engineer right. in physics an engineer in mechanics an engineer in alchemy because I'm putting together a, a journey to a roller coaster um, and one of the most powerful things I learned about roller coasters and you, you, you like, have you written in roller coasters? Yeah. yeah. They always end where they begin. Oh. And logistically, right. they do yeah. that because they want the people that just finished to get off and then put more people in. <laughs> so, you know, that logistically, uh -huh. that, that's mostly why they do it. But I love, for a dance, I love the fact that we're going to begin here and we're going to end here. Right. We're going to come right. It's that sense of completion. Completion. Right? And yeah. you, but you're not this, because when you see people when they finish a roller coaster, right? They're not the same. No, they're like, they're whoa. They're not the same people. Right. Yeah. So when we finish yeah. a dance yeah. Yeah. and we're back to where we started, we're not the same. Yeah. Yeah. And that's right. part of being a time traveler, too. Mm -hmm. That in this time, in this pocket of time that we just experienced, ecstatic dance we're a completely different person and um but you're safe back you know i brought you i right, brought you yeah with, we went in i want you to make sure you get back, back safely, safely. Back. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. well this has been a lovely talk i deeply enjoyed talking with you and sharing with you all thank you for watching and listening um <laughs> yeah yeah and hey if you have any questions or comments or would like to reach out to Oscar or myself um, please just uh, make a note down in the comments or inside the description we'll put a link to our email so you can reach out to us with any questions you might have um, mm -hmm. yeah we'd be happy to talk with you and yeah see, uh, see what the possibilities are <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> so. And dance like everybody's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. So, thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you again next time. Take care, everyone. <laughs>